chapter 2, verse 11 of Ephesians reads, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, the strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. You may be seated, and there you may be seated as well. Throughout this chapter 2 that we're studying, it yeah, you have to understand something about the church of Ephesus at this time. The church of Ephesus was mainly Gentiles. There were very few Jews in this church. That's why the tone of the letter is as it is. It's because it's directed to a certain group of people at a certain time. So every book of the Bible speaks of a certain time and a certain group of people in a certain context. These Ephesians are not, the Ephesians are not like the Church of Jerusalem. The Church of Jerusalem is mostly Jews. The Church of Ephesus is mostly Gentiles. Now, I want you to understand something about yourself. Until you can trace your lineage back 2,000 years, don't call yourself a Gentile. Don't call yourself a Jew either. Just say, I don't know. All right? Because the New Testament is for everybody. But people get hung up on, well, this is Gentiles and this is for me. Or this is Jews and this is for them. No, it's all for us. And unless you can trace your lineage, you don't know who you are. You just know you're a child of God. That's the main thing. So those folk will challenge you on your history. Stand fast in knowing that, hey, I don't know, so you can't put a label on me. And there are other people put labels on you, especially when you don't know. But I say that to say this. We are all up under Christ, Jew or Gentile. Therefore, we all need Christ, and we all need to learn more about Christ, and we all have to have a relationship with him. That's what our salvation is based on. Our salvation is not based on Jew or Gentile, because even at the time of uh, the Jews in the Old Testament, there was Moses had an Ethiopian wife. Uh, Jacob and his brothers. They didn't go down to Egypt, all of them with wives, but they came out with wives. They came out about 400, uh, 4,000 strong. So th there was a great number of people that came out of Egypt, bigger than what went down off in there. And there was some procreation going on, and guess what? Those Egyptian women didn't look half bad, all right? And uh, Pharaoh let that, uh, and then them, uh, <laughs> Abram's wife, Sarah, was definitely good looking to some Egyptians because he was fearing getting killed by them. So there was a lot of mixing going on around off in there. So there were people that was grafted into the covenant that the Jews had with God because of their relationship with the people. If you recall Ruth, she was a Moabite woman that was brought into the fold when she came back with her mother-in-law, and she came into the fold, and she's in the lineage of Christ. She's in that direct lineage. So there were people that were adopted into the Jewish culture of the circumcision that was not blood Jews. So remember that also. So you could be a Jew because you adopted the culture of the Jews, without being actually a Jew. But here, that leapfrogged me into the scripture, which says, in chapter 11, says, Wherefore, remember that you being in the time past Gentiles in the flesh, 
who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Now, this might be confusing. What is he talking about? He's talking about in the Old Testament, there was that division between circumcision and uncircumcision, those that God had a covenant with and those that God did not have a covenant with. So understand that there was a time when God was trying to set apart a group of people to be witness to the other people of the world because of their relationship with God. Now here's the thing about it. They messed it entirely up. Every single time you look around, the Jews was messing up their relationship with God. I mean, they was hot one minute, cold the next. I mean, you come in, David was hot for, for God, and he slipped up with Bathsheba. Then Solomon was hot for God, and he got a lot of women off into his harem, and he turned away from God. But then the Song of Solomon lets you be known that there's nothing new up under the sun, so the same thing that tempted you when you was coming up is going to tempt these you. And what happens throughout the Bible is you have times when people draw near to God, and then the next generation draws away from God, and it keeps going like a heartbeat. It falls up and goes down. You look within our own society as a people, and you see how in the time of Rosa Parks and the Black Panthers, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, the black community was real strong. Well, what's happened in this generation? It got real weak because the leadership isn't there. They took the leaders. So when you want to understand about uh, uh, the scripture, what it says in verse 11, the first thing that sticks out to me is wherefore remember. Wherefore remember who you were and who you are. Your history is important because your history is what dictates what your future can be. It also reminds you of where you came from. If you forget where you came from, then you'll forget where you're going and how to get there because the older ones already figured it out, but the new ones have forgot. See, so it is vital that there are elders in the church to teach the young. That way the young know and that they can teach the others when they come up what they learn from them. And they're not having to go back four or five generations to learn what they forgot. That way it's fresh on the mind. And here's the key about that. It says, times past in the flesh. See, the circumcision in the Old Testament was by the flesh. See, uh, when Jacob's brothers came down to Egypt because of the drought, the only way they can tell who Jacob was was when he opened up his garment and showed the circumcision. Otherwise, he looked just like the rest of the Egyptians who were from Africa. Egypt and Africa. Everybody know that? All right. So the only way that they could tell that he was up under the covenant of God from Mount Sinai was because of his circumcision of his flesh. Now, here's another thing I want y'all to understand. The circumcision was for the male only. Why? We're supposed to be up under the covenant of God. Therefore, we are the ambassadors to God covering the woman. But all too often, we get out of place. The woman covers the man instead of the man covering the woman because the man won't come to church, but the woman will. So she has a relationship with God, but the man doesn't have a relationship because men don't want to come to church because they don't want to sit and listen to another man because they have too much provider. It happens. It's a shame, but that's just how it is. That's why you see more women in the church than men. You go to any church in Jacksonville, and you will definitely see black, white, Hispanic, or the other. There will be more women in the church than men. And then we wonder why the women run the church, because they are in the majority, and we are in the minority. So, therefore, what the world has done is put women over men in the church, since we outnumber y'all anyway. Y'all going to do what we say. We decide. Anyway, we ain't going to get into that. But we are going to talk about the circumcision made by hands. Okay? The circumcision made by hands is different from what God has put into place. See, the circumcision in the Old Testament was of the flesh. 
and it was an outward change, not an inward change. See, now we are in a time of the New Testament was when God is calling us to make a change, but it's not an outward change. We're not tell, uh, he doesn't want you to be fake. He wants you to be real. He wants to change your heart, not your flesh. So there's no more, see, when if you were new to Christianity and you were trying to read the Bible like it was a novel to get an understanding of Christianity, you couldn't make it through the Old Testament without changing your diet, without going back to the doctor to get him snipped so you'd be circumcised. And by the time you get to the New Testament, you'd be like, man, I did all that for nothing. <laughs> I done sit through the pain of getting snipped down there, and I done, changed, I done stopped eating pork chops and everything else, and I done ain't ate no crawfish and no etouffee, and I, you did all that for nothing. Why? Because when Christ came, he changed everything. The whole game changed. But see, folk don't understand that, and they get caught up in the Old Testament, and they don't come up to the New and understand that this is grace and mercy that we are living up on, but it's grace and mercy through repentance of our sins and leaving our sins behind, not embracing our sins. So the circumcision made by hands is minuscule and does not do anything because it's not from the heart. If it's from the heart, then it takes over your whole body, your whole attitude change. It's if in the flesh, I can do anything in the flesh. I can feed you, I can clothe you, I can provide all these things for you and not love you. But see, the top two commandments that Jesus said in the Bible was to love. First to love God, then to love your neighbor. So when you have a circumcision of the heart, then the love is open. How you circumcise something? You cut it. To cut it, it has to bleed. To bleed, it has to be open. So when it bleeds, it is from the blood of Christ that it is cleansed. Well, if your heart is bleeding for Christ, the Holy Spirit is dwelling within. It opens up for it to dwell inside. So. Nothing by man's hands can be greater than what is done by God. So keep that in mind. You cannot outdo God. All throughout this chapter, it tells us, when you look at verse 1 and 2, it says your past, who you used to be. Don't forget about who you used to be, and so you can be thankful about who God has made you into. So in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, you are no longer living by your flesh, but you are living by the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on to 12, it says that at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now let's break this down real quick so we can make sure we understand where we're at with God and our relationship with God. It says that at that time you were without Christ. Look, in that time period, there were gods everywhere all over the world. It's just like it is right now. You go down, you got the Buddhists, you got the Muslim, you got the Jehovah's Witness. I put them in the whole class by themselves. You got the Amish, you got all these little cults, you got the, 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 the voodoo people and everything else like that, the vegan and all like that. Well, uh, when you look at these cultures back in this time period, they had the same thing. There was Zeus, they had Athena, they had Aphrodite, they had all these other gods that was made by hands, and these gods couldn't do nothing because they was made by human hands using what God had provided. See, so in essence, they take a piece of wood, carve it, put it on a mantle, call it their God, but they had to put it up there. Yeah. See, I don't have to put Christ up anywhere. He's already there. I don't worship the creation because I know the creator. I don't worship the son because I know the son of God put it there to begin with, and I know that he didn't even have to have it there to have light because God said, let there be light, and there was light. So I know the God that's able to do all things. I know the God that was able to breathe life into the first body and then make a woman out of a rib. That's why man is kind of rough and women are smooth. 
Because yeah. we was from the sand and she's from the bone. Yeah. That bone is smooth. That's why she got, that's why she slick with it sometimes. You don't even know. She got you doing things you didn't even know you was going to be doing. Because she slick with it. But you were, these people were living with these guys without Christ. See, Christ was void from the piece of wood, from the gold, from the silver, from the platinum. God is worth more than that. He is above all that. He's the creator of that. So why would you worship something that is the creation? I mean, that's just like me making a piece of furniture and you praising the furniture for making itself. My hands made it. My chisel was on the wood, but you praising the wood. Okay, that ain't going to work. And then man can make a machine that can make other parts, but you praising the machine for the part, and you looking at how good this part looks, but you give no credit to the machine. It doesn't work like that. You have to give honor to the creator to truly have an appreciation to the creation. Because when I work with a piece of wood and I mold it into what I want it to be, what my vision was, I have taken part in that. It's my vision. I have created that through God's will. Let me forget that, but I'm making an example. So don't y'all stick with me for a minute. I have created it so it has formed everything that I wanted to have. If it looks good, if it's pristine, if it's pleasing to the eyes, because that's how I created it. Yes, yes. Well, see, that's how God created you. Every single one of us is a creation of God, and we are perfect in God's eyes. We are perfect because we are made in his image. Yes. So our perfection comes through the grace and the mercy of God because we are perfected through him. See, when we are born, we are made out of rough clay. Then we find God, then we start to take form and be formed into what he wants us to be. That's called sanctification. And see, we were aliens of the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. That's what I was saying earlier. The covenant was with Israel. God had a covenant with Israel that did not extend to the rest of the world. That's why Jonah had to go to the people of Nineveh because the covenant was with the Jew and not the people of Nineveh, but the people of Nineveh recognized a man of God, of God, and so they complied with what God had for them to do. Now, where do we get caught up at? We don't listen to the man of God because... We despise the man of God because we despise God, because we had no relationship with God. So our jealousy overwhelms our, uh, 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 our ears, so we don't want to hear the man of God because we're jealous of the relationship. But the relationship is not confined to the man of God. You can have that relationship too. You just choose not to. Where I have embraced God and everything that he has for me, and I'm enjoying the benefits of that. Yeah. You have not, therefore you don't enjoy the same benefits that I have, therefore we don't have a lot to talk about. I mean, I talk to you and, and I can tell you, but you're gonna get mad at me sooner or later because you're gonna be like, well man, this man gave me all this glory to God, man, you did something, yeah, I follow what God told me to do. Yeah. That's the difference between being hands of man and hands of God is I'm just following God and doing what he tell me to do and not being in myself. So when I am in myself, I go terribly wrong. But when I'm in God, I go terribly right. And my cup overflows. Because that's what God told me he would do. He prepares a meal before me in the presence of my enemies, and my cup would overflow. So if you want haters, be in God. You're going to get them. But don't be mistaken about the hating. It's not because of you, it's because of God. And don't be so full of yourself that you create your own hate. So you can be out of God's will thinking you in God's will. But you out of line. It is what it is. Strangers from the covenant of promise because the Jews was promised a Messiah that would come, but when he came, they didn't recognize him. So the Jews had an advantage, but they lost it. That's why there's still Jews practicing Judaism 
because they haven't woken up to the fact that the risen crisis came. Yeah. They thought he was an imposter and they never caught on. So we have been engrafted into the nation of the Jews yeah. by Christ yeah. who has come for us all. Yeah. But someone had us to be divided into black, white, Hispanic, and the other, yeah. and American, and uh, uh, African, and European, and whatnot, but we are all in Christ. Yeah. We are all his creation. We are one. Once we figure that out, yeah. then we're going to have a rainbow off in the yeah. church yeah. instead of just milk chocolate yeah. with a little cream. Amen. Having no hope and without God in the world. See, when we had no God, when we didn't know God, we didn't know where the grace and the mercy comes from. But the more you have a relationship with God, you understand that we can trust him. But the trust only comes through faith. Salvation comes through faith. So we already have salvation because we believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, but the trust factor, what we deal with, what we struggle with. You can be a Christian and have little faith. You can be young in Christ. You can be young in Christ in age, but old in your trust in Christ. Then you can be old in age and young in your trust in Christ because your faith has not grown because it has not been nurtured by God. We have more faith in man than we have in God. Let me give you a good example. And I'm not trying to be political, but this is what it is. Obama didn't save every black person in America. And Trump can't do it either. When you, and the people ask, why did God let Trump be president? And I tell them, it's because one, you saw that Obama couldn't save you. That was for one side. You got to do some work on your own. I mean, yeah, you got a black president, yeah. but that don't mean you got to stop working. Yeah. Then the white folk got angry about having the black man in office, so they put another white man as white as they could get off in the office to save the white folk, and he ain't saving the men. <laughs> Matter of fact, he about to get a bunch of folk killed. <laughs> so what is the moral of the story? A man cannot save you. Your salvation lies in God. It doesn't lie in a man. I can't save you. Trump can't save you. Your senators can't save you. Your employer can't save you. The doctor can't save you. God can save you. That is it. That's the only person that can save you. Otherwise, you are destined for hell fire. If it was not for God giving grace, mercy, and salvation being the free gift, we'd all be screwed. So it says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made near, nigh by the blood of Christ. Look, it's the blood of Christ. It's nothing else. If it was not for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you would not have salvation. It would still not be a free gift. Look in the Old Testament when they was making all these sacrifices. I mean, you're talking about plenty of chickens being killed next Sunday. I tell you what, there was plenty of uh, chickens, goats, sheep, rams, uh, doves, plenty of grain offerings, wine offerings going up to heaven, and it still didn't wash away the sins of man. All it did was put it off to a later date. All we was doing was, compound, was paying off the compound interest of our sins. And anybody know anything about uh, 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 money and finances, if you ain't paying, if you paying the minimum, all that's getting taken off is the minimum. The principal is still making it grow. It's when the principal comes down when the interest goes down. Look at here. If you sitting in your sin, all you're doing is adding to the compound interest. It's when you took on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that chapter 13 wasn't even necessary. Your debt was made clear. You didn't even have to file the paperwork. Jesus Christ just wrote it all out. Your sins are forgiven, but it's from repentance. The blood cleanses, but if you don't repent, you have not accepted everything that Jesus Christ has made available to you. If you do not repent of your sin, 
walk away from your sin, then you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The blood has done no good. If you are the same person today as you was yesterday, you did not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You just said something superficially, and you have received a superficial reward. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as the circumcision of your heart, then there will be no change. Any change that occurs will be superficial and not official. Because the circumcision of the heart is what opens up for the Holy Spirit to indwell. Therefore, when you are dwelling with the Holy Spirit, you are dwelling with Christ. And then you, are go you can go in front of the Father and be clean and polished. It all starts with remembering where you came from. Remembering who you were. Remember how God delivered you from all your sins and to be thankful. That will make you be in repentance for everything that you've done and appreciate Christ's death, burial, and resurrection so that you can have everlasting life. So that you can live a life that is sinless because you are not living a life that is godless. It is God who saves, not man. The preacher can only preach. The teacher can only teach. The prophet can only prophesy. But if the seeds do not fall on fertile ground, there can be no growth. Your faith will stay where it is, and it will either wither away and blow away. If you want to know who Christ is, open up your Bible and study. If you want to know who God is, have a relationship with him, and then you can build on that. If you want to be with Christ for an eternity, it's open to you. But if you reject it, that's on you, and that's our sermon for today. Amen.